Welcome back everybody. We are down here in the Southern Command. So instead of the geese, you guys will be hearing the bugs around me. But today we're doing a review of this particular firearm right here. This is the Grand Power Strybog SP9A3. Now I already did a video on an SP9A3 and you guys can check that out. But this one is the SP9A3G. The G designation says that it comes with and works with Glock mag magazines. So uh, Glock compatible mags. So really, if you're looking for any type of, you know, pistol compatible, pistol mag compatible carbine, Glock really is one of the first choices for a lot of folks, simply because the mags are ubiquitous and they're relatively inexpensive. And pretty much everyone has a Glock 9mm at this point. As the pistol comes from the factory, basically we have a little spacer on the rear of it here. This is of course the SB tactical brace that we put in place of that. There are 1913 adapters. There's a number of different uh, options for mounting either a pistol brace or a stock to this. Obviously there are grand power factory stocks because this originally was designed as a submachine gun overseas. So you can push our button in and close it on up and it's pretty flat with it folded. It still works folded just fine. Maybe hard to see, but it does clear the ejection port with that so uh, it's in terms of the actual drop down that we have here it's very European in that regard uh, the European folks like that drop down toe is what it is but what it does work well with is a low mounted red dot in that case so uh, instead of having like a straight back design where you would need a higher optic this does allow to, you to mount your optic a little bit lower and keep it a little bit more of a low pro profile package overall now the pistol does come with backup sights. So it has two positions, basically uh, notches like we have here where you just have a rear notch and then a little post up front or the rings that we have here. So you have a ghost ring with a white dot up front. Now they are not zeroable in any way. However, this one on mine at 25 yards with Minuteman munitions was about an inch off to the right and elevation was perfect. So they're pretty darn close from the factory and for what they are, meaning like backup emergency use sites, I suppose they work fine. Of course, on top here, we do have 1913 rail across the board so you can mount whatever optic that you choose to do so. We have our Holosun 403 B or 403R rather on there. This is a version of the 403B, which is the basic model, but this one's a little bit fancier. It has the protected uh, elevation turrets and it also has our dial for your actual illumination settings on there. Of course, you're still going to get two to five year battery life, two MOA dot, all of those sorts of things. And I think it actually comes with a lower one third co witness mount as well. Moving on to the grip itself, it is a very vertical grip angle, sort of like, like a BCM AR-15 grip. It's got good texturing to it all the way around. Really, there's not much that I'm gonna complain about on that front. Safety is ambidextrous, has a good positive click to it. And so is our magazine release. The magazine release is also steel. Some previous versions with the Strybogs, that was not the case, but it is steel. Of course, our magazines that it comes with, I think are KCI, but they are steel lined Glock magazines. Before getting into the bolt lock and bolt release, we'll drop our magazine. It'll make it a little easier to illustrate. Now from the factory, our uh, charging handle there is on the left side of the pistol. However, you can swap it to the right. It's very easy to do so. And uh, basically our bolt lock is ambidextrous. It's this piece of metal right here on both sides of your lower receiver. And if you just push up on it while you pull back, it will lock the bolt home. At this point, we can insert a magazine or just drop it by either pushing down here with your trigger finger or when you insert that magazine as a righty, just come up and hit it with your thumb down and that will send a round home. Moving on forward, we do have a rail that is basically a M-Lock and 1913 compatible rail on the bottom, of course, and the top if you want to. Uh, we have our 1913 sections for adding vertical foregrip, lights, lasers, whatever you may want. And then we have our M-Lock slots there on both sides. We have added the Magpul Aluminum uh, Surefire Scout Mount 
and also a stream light, uh, rail mount one. It's a great little like PDW light in my opinion. It's 350 lumens. More importantly, it's 12,000 candela. It can work with either uh, CR123As or AA batteries. So excellent little light. Uh, if you want something lightweight that has good output and can use different battery sources. Uh, continuing on to our barrel itself. It's a lightweight profile. It is a cold hammer forged barrel. It's nitrided and it's threaded for half by 28. Now from, from the factory, you just get basically a thread protector with it and you can put on whatever flash hider suppressor muzzle device brake that you want to on there now uh, let's get this thing taken apart and show you kind of some of the innards and how those work before I disassemble the gun, one thing I want to talk about is going to be the trigger. So on the Strybog, on the A1s, the triggers were a little bit rough. They have absolutely improved it in my opinion. First thing we'll do, of course, before we mess with it, is make sure that it's clear and the gun is clear. Now, uh, as you can see there, it has that flat trigger shoe. And when we take it apart, you'll see it is very AAR-like. And we will put it on fire and I will stop talking. You can see there, there's really no uptake. You basically, once you start to press it, you're at the wall. Reset and break. The break itself is right around four and a half to five pounds. I mean, single stage, it's pretty good. Like if you can't hit stuff with this gun, it's not because of the trigger. Now to take it down, we're gonna take our two pins down. Some people just take the rear down, that's fine. Uh, but these pins are tight, guys, so. Right now, we need something to push it through. Eventually, that might not be the case, but as of right now, they are very, very tight. So once we pull that down, we can pull our brace out, and of course, we can slide our lower down. At this point, you can pull on your charging handle and your slide assembly and your roller will all come out. Now, I'm gonna take the lower out just to kind of show you guys how that works. But again, for normal maintenance, you do not need to. And there is our lower. Now looking in there, you guys can see very AR-like as we talked about there with the trigger. And the trigger is in a trigger pack. Now, if you go online, you will see reports of guys who have actually fitted AR-15 triggers to these guns. Now, uh, obviously, that's probably not covered under warranty, but it is possible. Just know that you can do it, um, but I'm not sure if you really want to, but you can. And that of course is how it functions. Here is our slide lock or bolt lock rather and bolt release. And uh, of course our magazine release that you guys saw earlier. The A3 Strybogs are often described as being roller delayed. And I suppose that's somewhat true. We'll set that aside, our recoil spring assembly, because we don't need it. Uh, but only if you consider this pin to be a roller. Some folks might, that's cool. I'm cool with that. So basically uh, the way it goes together is like so. So we have our weight out front and then we have the bolt assembly now basically when it is in the you know locked position it's like this and then probably turning it upside down will make it easier to see um, but when a round is fired the piece here goes back and obviously in the gun it would be captured but that piece goes back delaying it until it hits the rear and then once this piece hits the rear then the bolt assembly goes back. So that is the delay. It's a very simple system. And the earlier ones that came out that had some issues had a weird geometry issue up here on the front. But now, as you can see, US, they got the US made ones that are new and improved. And of course, all of this fits very, very tightly inside the upper receiver, which is a one piece aluminum upper receiver. Outside of the gun though, make sure you don't drop your roller. It's very easy to do. Ask me how I know. Moving on to the upper itself. One thing you note there is there's our ejector. And then we also have this very, very large, I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up, um, feed ramp on there. So one thing that they had to do a little bit differently with the Glock mag version was change out the design of the bolt to be able to feed from a single point rather than a double feeding left and right feeding uh, standard submachine gun type of magazine that the original Strybogs work with. So they did that, but they also kept this gigantic feed ramp for reliability. I don't see why they wouldn't smart on them for doing so. Now we're gonna see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this setup. Mind you, a limiting factor for sure in this is my eyes. Uh, we have the target down range at um, 50 yards and a bench rest here that's 
not ideal, uh, but it's the one we got, so we're working with it. Typically, I'd like to get it on the ground, but the grass is way too high, and the bullet's going to hit it, and it's going to deflect, and it's going to ruin the accuracy. Uh, so it just goes garbage results. So we're doing it on the bench, making do with what we got, guys. We got some in the gun right now, Minuteman Munitions. This is their 115 grain stuff, uh, total metal jacket. Absolutely not match stuff. They are our ammo sponsor here. We appreciate them uh, for 9mm, that is. So uh, everything's stock, and uh, just that Caldwell rest. Again, I'd rather be on the ground, but is what it is and we're we have red dot at 50 yards those are my excuses all right now let's see what we can do all right so all the loads that we have out here today are going to be 115 grams just all i have down here at the southern command right now this is a magpul magazine so we're testing that as well as the remington umc jacketed hollow point in there so old school these like back in the 90s were like what every law enforcement uh unit carried so are used some of them had the plus p federals but they're pretty ubiquitous and uh let's see what it'll do all right click no bang Looks like it didn't feed. That's not good. I don't know if it's a Magpul thing or not. <laughs> don't shoot that one, kids. Not recommended. That's the first failure we've had of any kind, but it's also the first time we've used a Magpul mag, so don't know. Once again, it's not feeding. It's got to be a magpole mag. I mean, I just, it's just hitting that ramp. It's feeding too low. I can see it. I know you guys can't, but trust me on that. That's what's happening. It's not wanting to come out either. Also not good. Well, I think we can say it don't like the P-mags, at least this one. Locked back at least. Lastly, we have some Red Army Standard here. Uh, this stuff has been not accurate in former PCC videos. We'll see. Why not? Why not try the cheap stuff? Let's check them out. Groups are a little bit surprising in a good way, in my opinion, that Minuteman did pretty darn well. Uh, we had two rounds, it looks like, went in that hole. I can kind of see two different bullet shapes there. So center to center, we are right at, that's probably the bigger one, right at two and an eighths inches. So like four and a half MOA for just ball nine millimeter. I will take that all day long with a red dot. Uh, then our Remington group opened up here. As you guys can see, sort of looked like a vertical string kind of thing. And uh, honestly, it's right at uh, doo -doo -doo, just under five inches, four and three quarters inches. And honestly, I wonder if that is because the bullets are being compressed from the Magpul mag. I suppose we'll never know. We don't retest here, uh, but that's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, but then we had our Tula over here. And I can't tell, you guys have seen the footage. I haven't seen it yet. Either two bullets went through one hole or we had a crazy flyer. I don't know. Again, you guys would know better than I do uh, as a mosquito chomps down on my back. Um, but right there, center to center, we are at one and five eighths and that one. Yeah, so one and five eighths inches with the rounds we have here. Again, I don't know if that's all of them. You guys know better than I do. Uh, but if that's the case, that's a fantastic group as well with ball ammo. 
Now that you have seen the accuracy, let's talk about reliability. So this gun right now has around 400 rounds through it, the vast majority of that being Minuteman munitions. And we had two, I guess you'd call them issues uh, throughout filming. Both occurred with the KCI magazines. So I'm not sure if it's a magazine issue when we were running factory Glock mags and you know, outside of the mag pull that you guys saw as well, we're running factory Glock mags, which we ran multiple through there, it had zero issues. So with that, it did have a false lock back on one of them where it just randomly locked back early and then one time it did not hold open so the bolt hold open didn't work with one of the magazines but other than that it ran everything flawlessly to include those hollow points again in a Glock magazine as you guys just saw so with that uh, price point on this so right now these are I think the most expensive version of the Strybogs because of course the A3 is a little bit more than the A1 and then to have that Glock lower adds another hundred two hundred dollars to it as well so with the SP tactical brace they tend to come in around thirteen to fourteen hundred dollars so not inexpensive however there's some things about it that really are advantageous. Obviously, delayed blowback makes the guns a little bit quieter, uh, a little bit less recoil, a little faster follow-up shots. With a silencer, if you run subsonics, really are very, very quiet because you don't have the opening of a gigantic bolt happening and all of that noise coming out of there. With that, I think it's pretty much all I got. If you guys aren't following me on my various socials, please go ahead and do so. If you aren't subscribed here on the channel and you like this type of review, definitely hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. If you've done both of those and you're still not seeing two to four videos a week here on the channel, uh, you can sign up for my email at the website here on your screen. This email goes out at most once a month and it has all of the videos since the previous email went out so that way there's no big tech giant censoring your eyes from my content through an algorithm additionally if any of this stuff here goes on sale um, we will send it out in our daily deals email ammo optics accessories, guns, whatever the case may be, if it's in that daily deals email, uh, it is the cheapest I know of anywhere on the internet. So that way it saves you guys some money and some time because I do the looking for you and do all the comparisons. So if it's in there again, cheapest I know of anywhere on the internet on that particular day and hopefully saves you some money as well. With that, that's all I got. Thank you all for watching. I truly appreciate it. I look forward to seeing everybody in the next video.